Hello everyone, my name is Nikita and I am the project leader for Escape from Tarkov from Battle State Games. We are now recording the first issue of our developer diary here in St. Petersburg. With it we would like to start a whole series of such videos, telling you more about Escape from Tarkov, various interesting features and how the development is going, and introducing you to the developers who work on it. Our work started as far back as 2012, when all info was kept secret, nobody knew we were developing another project, and that project was Escape from Tarkov. It is set in the universe of Russia 2028, and all of our ideas that we've used so far or going to use, including a well-known online shooter Contract Wars, they all belong to the same universe of Russia 2012. By the way, it was Contract Wars that gave us everything we needed – experience, people, resources and various other bonuses. Reaping benefits from a project like this, we decided to make something serious, something distinctive, something that will become the dawn of a new age for the genre, something to be proud of. My name is Alexei, I'm a reserve officer and co-author of Russia 2028 Universe, as well as writer, game designer and military advisor. The key feature of Escape from Tarkov is maximum possible realism. To achieve this realism in everything related to military actions in the game, we use real weapons and combat experience. With weapons, we ride to various outdoor and indoor polygons and record videos and sounds. My experience, including the one in combat, allows us, thanks to motion capture technologies, achieve the ultimately realistic animations, both in weapon handling like shooting, reloading, removing jamming and stovepipes, and character movement. The key principle of our work is modeling reality. On one hand, the task seems simple, we have life and we have to implement it in-game. On the other hand, we have to maintain the maximum degree of authenticity and detail. This is why we decided to make this developer diary, to show you, our players, how the escape from dark of development is going, and share with you the excitement and challenge of working on it. In the first issue we have decided to focus the story on animations and animation system. It is probably the most important part of visual appeal. All players pay attention to it. No animation, no fun. Now I'm happy to introduce you to our galaxy-wide celebrity, Alexander Kovalchuk, best known as Kiba. He is our lead animator and he knows everything about animation and now he'll share some of his knowledge with you. I've made it into the team three years ago, literally just walked in from the street without any game development experience whatsoever and filled the position of an apprentice 3D modeler. Half a year and several roughly modeled weapons later, guys on the team suggested me to try animating the weapons. Of course, if you look at the first gun I tampered with, it's gonna make me cry. However, a hundred guns later, both of my own and fixed after my predecessors, there are some things to be proud of. I've come up with plenty of ideas and features I'd like to introduce. And Escape from Tarkov is the perfect playground for this. It's a real paradise for any weapon enthusiast. Me and my colleagues are facing a real chance of setting a new bar for weapon implementation in games. Our goal is maximum realism in weapon handling. Naturally, we've got to have some props close at hand of all possible kinds, from toy guns to real military training hardware. And since it's meant for training, we are free to wear it out with no load work to our heart's content right in the office. We have to understand how to bring the mag to the base, how to release the slide stop quickly, and how much force to apply to do it. You have to know your tools in and now to understand what it can do and what is just plain impossible. The traditional approach to animations and shooters was unacceptable. We had to build a whole system which would cover all possible aspects of weapon handling. Talking about other shooters generally, every weapon has four or five animations. Pull it out, shoot, reload, full or not, and if we're lucky, an idle animation. In our case, however, the very same weapon will need ten times more animations, with all of them divided into segments and adjusted appropriately for smooth transition of one into another in numerous possible combinations. Moreover, all of them should run smoothly, sharply and most importantly, not arbitrarily. 
Eventually, the system grew up to be what we have now. Briefly, just briefly, it's drawing weapon, zeroing, shooting, ejecting magazine, inserting magazine, fast drop of the magazine, ejecting the old mag with the new one in hand, releasing side stop if there is one, in the, if there isn't and there is no cartridge in the chamber, cocking the receiver, removing misfired cartridge, removing jamming or stove pipes, switching fire mode controller, weapon idling and a dozen more animations that are either absent in other games or made rather primitively. Let's move on to the development scene. What do we see first? Characters' legs, of course. Hooray! Seems like everybody wanted to see characters' legs. In our hands we have AK-74N without receiver cover. Well, since we're normal people, we'll put it back. Please note, all operations are animated. Thereon we notice the absence of a magazine. If you're an inexperienced AK-74 owner, you will do the following loading operations. Basics and classics. Let's now eject the magazine and try it again. Notice the cottage remaining in chamber. Now let's imagine you're slightly more experienced owner. Whole other story, like a true Spetsnaz. Switching to full auto. We can also check if there is ammo remaining in the mag, which, by the way, was taken from RPK-74. Now let's try to completely unload some weapon, for instance, a Makarov pistol. Legendary, reliable, fail-safe. Here we see there is a magazine and a round in the chamber. Eject the magazine and the round up, right in the hand. Now drawing AK-74 again. Now let's try to imagine the situation where a failsafe Kalashnikov starts to misfire and jam the cases. Let's start with misfire. Please note, the whole cartridge is extracted. Now let's try an instance of jamming of extracted case. We can do this all day. Quick drop happens like this. That was a regular reload. And now a quick drop. Every magazine on the low player levels will be just dropped. If you have leveled up a bit, the loading will go like this. First we take our new magazine and insert it while holding the old one. Loading M4. Quick magazine drop on M4 is classic. Let's try the case jamming scenario. Well, I think that's enough info for starters. As for the character animation, just imagine that everything I've just told you about will be reflected in third-person character animations. Hello, my name is Evgeny, and I will be demonstrating the third-person character animations. Our character repeats all first-person animations that we have in third-person as well. The main challenge of character animation was to avoid feet sliding and make the changes of pace smooth. Let's hold control and scroll. The speed grows from minimum to maximum, from walking to running. Same thing happens to movement in all directions, right or left. 
We also have the ability to change the character's stance height even at the maximum speed. Minimum height, maximum height. To do this, we hold C and scroll. With all this, we do our best to avoid character sliding, overstepping or animation delays. Also, we have a visual reflection of character aiming. We made this so player aiming at somebody from the side could easily understand where the opponent is looking and whether he can see the player or not. While working on the complex of various animations tasks, we decided that we need maximum control over it. We can just make 800,000 animations for each of the possibly imaginable character actions. We need to make the character controllable. Hence, we decided we should, so to say, procedurize all animations to maximum possible extent, make them as manageable by code as possible, so we could describe and show all situations that can happen to a player and immediately see the animated reaction to these influences. This enormous task have got many people working on it. And now I'd like to introduce Dima, one of the key specialists on this task. He will tell you in more detail what had to be done and what is the point of all this. One of the things we strive to get right in Escape from Tarkov is a visual representation of a character's physical condition. I am talking about health, wounds and traumas, fatigue as well as weight and destructive power of the weapon. All this should provide immediate visual feedback, not only influencing the player's overall look, but affecting animation as well. You can only get as much done with traditional keyframe animation. And that's where I step in. Even on the early stages of Escape from Tarkov development, the need to animate all character interactions with environment already appeared. I'll show the complete adjustment process on the example of this typhoon. We add one simple component, which is adjusted in three stages. Positions of open and closed door, which I am setting now. Open rotation, closed rotation. Then we have to add the direction of character's look and a position for his hand. Let's move starting position for interaction a little bit. Set the direction of player's glance. And now we can check how it works in the game. Alright, let's check the newly adjusted Typhoon. As you can see, it works. Door is open, we're inside. The same process is used for the rest of the transport. As you can see, markers denote the hand position. And the door opens. Beside doors we can also open the hood, which is already open here, and the trunk. Not sure about the glove boxes yet, if we should go into such detail, but everything is possible. Without procedural animation, the weapon behavior in character's hands would look like this. Lifeless, no dynamics or feeling of weight. Let's try to mend this by adding at least character breathing. Looking lively already. Let's finish the scene by adding weight. Now we have some movement inertia, it looks way more realistic. Also, Escape from Tarkov takes into account the weapon dimensions, which have quite a bit of influence on gameplay. As we can see, Kalashnikov doesn't fit here and is taken to the breast. But at the same time we have no problem with Makarov due to its small size. These were just a few examples of use that procedural animation has in our project. Well, our first issue is coming to its end. We hope you liked it and found something new and interesting in it. 
We are going to make the dire issues regular and dive into more development detail. Please subscribe to Battle State channel and visit escapefromtarkov.com. You can find a lot of interesting materials there as well as the forum where we can discuss everything we have seen so far. Thank you for your time. Stay tuned.